Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Ashling, the urology SHO, and we're going to tell a story of a ureteric injury, another example of a team working really well together. A 49 year old lady um, who presented to AE on a Friday evening or afternoon. Uh, her background history was significant for depression, hepatitis C, and she was an intravenous drug user. Uh, she was brought by ambulance to the ED department after being found by her husband in a pool of blood in a cupboard under the stairs. Uh, on arrival, she was quite distressed. She was unable to give any uh, history of, of what had happened to her. She was hypotensive, tachycardic and quite disorientated. On examination, her abdomen was peritonitic and she had a small wound in the right iliac fossa and another one in the right buttock. The cause of these was unknown. Her bloods were grossly unremarkable. Her creatinine was slightly elevated at 126, that was about it. And her urinalysis was positive for two pus blood and one plus leukocytes. Uh, she was resuscitated as per ATLS guidelines and once stable, she was transferred uh, to CT. So her CT abdomen pelvis was carried out. This revealed a large pelvic hematoma. Um, Extravasation of contrast was seen from the right ureter, which raised the possibility of ureteric injury. Uh, there was also a lot of free air uh, seen. So th there was also extravasation of contrast seen from the anterior branch of the right internal iliac and the right inferior epigastric artery. And uh, our patient was subsequently brought to IR where she was embolized. Uh, the urology team got involved at this stage uh, as the patient was uh, brought to the theatre. Um, a rigid cystoscopy was carried out and blood was seen at the right ureteric orifice. There had been a query regarding bladder injury on the <coughs> CT and this was outruled. Um, a bilateral retrograde was performed and as you can see on the image here there was extravasation of uh, contrast along the ureter. Uh, she subsequently we went on to do a ureteroscopy and a large defect was seen in the distal one third of the ureter. We were unable to get a guide wire beyond this. Uh, a laparotomy was carried out and a large incomplete transection of the distal one third of the right ureter was noted. The ureter was mobilized, the injured section was excised. Uh, unfortunately, there was inadequate length for a primary anastomosis and <coughs> thus a boari flap was fashioned over a JJ stent. And a number of small bowel enterotomies were seen. At this stage, the uh, superhero surgical reg stepped in and performed um, two uh, excisions of small bowel and two end-to-end -end anastomoses. Uh, the patient had a very unremarkable post-op course. Uh, on day 13 post-operatively prior to going home, she had a cystogram which showed no evidence of any uh, leak and her suprapubic catheter was removed. Uh, she subsequently returned six weeks post-operatively for the JJ stents to be removed. Uh, so ureteric trauma in general. Uh, this urology in general is often overlooked in the setting of acute trauma, even though they do account for approximately 10% of all abdominal trauma seen in the emergency departments. Uh, ureteric injuries account for less than 1% of that small number. Uh, the ureter for the medical students, because it is its retroperitoneal um, location, it's often well protected and thus avoids injury. So ureteric trauma was uh, interestingly first des uh, described by an ophthalmologist, Alfred Poland, uh, who worked in London. By all accounts, he was quite eccentric, uh, if renowned for his great surgical skills. And he reported <coughs> the case of a woman who was crushed by a train and she had disruption of um, the ureter below the renal pelvis. Uh, it was missed on admission, as these injuries often are, and was only discovered at autopsy. The first bilateral ureteric repair, injury and repair, was then uh, reported in USA in the 1980s uh, after a gunshot wound. Uh, ureteric injuries are important and should always be um, considered as they can be associated with significant morbidity and mortality. Uh, hematuria is often not present. In our case it was, but up to, in case reports up to 75% of the time there may be no hematuria. Um, if it's suspected, the uh, ureter should be visualised, be this by direct visualisation intraoperatively with a ret uh, retrograde like we did or uh, with ureteroscopy.
Um, the American Association uh, for the Surgery of Trauma have come up with injury scales for all sorts of um, organ injury and the ureter is no different. Um, our patient had an incomplete transection of the ureter and thus was a grade three. three. The management options depend really on where exactly along the ureter that the uh, injury occurs. So it may be, if it's quite proximal, it may be suitable for reanastomosis. If it's more distal, reimplantation may be appropriate. And somewhere in the middle, like our patient, uh, sausage or boari flap may be considered. And uh, no matter the op type of repair that is chosen, there's a few key elements that must be considered. So the repair should be carried out as early as possible and all the devitalized tissue should be debrided away. Uh, it's necessary that the repair is tensionless and watertight, should be carried out around a stent. Uh, so with particular focus on uh, the Boari flap, uh, Achille Boari was a 19th century Italian surgeon and he's the first one to describe this technique. It can be used to repair ureteric defects or strictures of up to 14 centimetres long. Um, what happens is the ureter is mobilised and uh, the injured section is excised. The end is then spatulated. Uh, the bladder is then opened and uh, part of the anterior wall is tubularised and the ureter is then an anastomosed to this, uh, creating, in essence, a fake ureter from part of the bladder wall. Uh, the bladder is then closed in a two-layer closure. Uh, there are a few absolutes uh, for uh, this procedure. Uh, the bladder must be of normal capacity. The patient mustn't have had any pelvic radiotherapy and there must be no history of any uh, previous bladder problems. Unfortunately, like all procedures, there's uh, complications and the most common ones in this case are anastomotic leak, stenosis or stricture and reduced bladder capacity. Uh, and just in this picture, the arrow is uh, where the ureter is being reattached. You can see the stent coming along through. That's the anterior flap of the bladder wall being brought up behind uh, the stent. And then you can see the catheter in the base of the bladder. And that's it. <laughs>